Welcome to the Psychology Club podcast, brought to you by Vicente Martinez High School. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the VMHS Psychology Club podcast. I'm Christopher Patrick, and today I am joined by... My name is Nicole Square. I'm a youth development specialist with the Contra Costa County Office of Education. I work in the Tobacco Use Prevention Education Program. Thank you guys for having me. No problem. We also have another special Good guest. Good afternoon. My name is Marissa Frias. I'm the intervention specialist with uh, the Contrast County Office of Education, Tobacco Use Prevention and Education Program. And thank you also for having me. Don't worry. And we're also joined by the usual. I'm John. And we got our teachers and inspectors. The I am inspector. <laughs> So, with all of our introductions being done, may I ask the first question? Why is vaping during the, why is vaping during the coronavirus harmful? So, vaping during any time is harmful, um, but especially with the coronavirus because the coronavirus attacks your lungs. So, anytime you're vaping or smoking or any type of irritation to the lung is going to really make it more difficult if you are battling the coronavirus. Um, the corona COVID-19 attacks um, your lungs. Um, and so when you're vaping or smoking, it really harms your lungs and um, makes your immune system not as strong so that you can fight off any other type of infection like COVID-19. Was that, that was, okay? Yeah, that was actually a lot to take in. I didn't think about all of that, you know? I just thought that, you know, it's, you get a terrible cough and then smokers who already have a bad cough can get it confused for a coronavirus cough as well. Yeah, COVID-19, I'm, I'm not a doctor, um, but from everything that I'm hearing about COVID-19, it is far worse than the common cold or flu. It is really wreaking havoc on people's um, respiratory system and making it extremely difficult for them to breathe and having to be put on ventilators or get oxygen. And that is of course for the people that have COVID-19 and receive or are having a severe reaction to it. Of course, not everybody that gets COVID-19 has a serious reaction to it, but um, smoking and um, vaping does reduce um, your immune system, so it will make it more difficult for you to fight off COVID-19. Yeah, that's that's serious news right Free. here. Free there. That's all. Sean, take it away. I just said, what's Marissa's take on this situation? Like, what, what's her opinion on it? Thank you for asking, Sean. Actually, um, I'm with um, Nicole. All the all that we've been reading, um, it's it's a big deal, right? It's a big deal even for people who don't use tobacco. So for people who do use tobacco and you have the um, the tar in your lungs and you have that buildup, and then having this extra um, infection and um, it's damaging the lungs even more, and it's making it harder for them to um, recover from it. Thank you. It's always good to have two. Is vaping bad for you, even if there's no nicotine? Like zero percent? Yes. And any youth that work with Derek Kirk and I, um, uh, Derek is our other youth development specialist. They know when we do our presentations, we really talk about this. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of regulation around e-juices and so a lot of e-juices may say that they have zero nicotine but under further investigation we're finding that they ha may have small traces of um, nicotine in them but even aside from the nicotine and the e-juices are not vaping or using electronic cigarette device is damaging to your lungs so unfortunately um, the tobacco um, industry has done a really good job at marketing electronic cigarettes as vape pens. And when people think of vape pens, they think of vapor, like clean steam that's coming off the shower or from a tea kettle. 
And we know that that's not what it is. It's actually an aerosol, but aerosolizing doesn't sound as nice as vaping. So using the aerosol, and it's basically thousands of chemicals suspended in a gas that then you're inhaling into your lungs. And so regardless to whether there's nicotine in the e-juices or not, all of those chemicals in e-juice are going into your lungs and damaging your lungs. Nicotine in the e-juices does, does add an extra layer because nicotine is a highly addictive substance. Um, so that makes you addicted to the e-juice and um, whatever product you're using. But Vaping, even without nicotine, is still dangerous and does damage to your lungs because of all the chemicals that are suspended in this aerosol that's then being pushed into your lungs. Next question. Is there secondhand vape, um, secondhand vape and thirdhand vape? And if so, is it dangerous to like babies or animals or just like everybody you're surrounding basically? Yeah, speaking of third hand vape indoor smoke, how does that work? That's a very next question. Yeah, so yes, the short answer is yes. So when you're smoking a combustible cigarette, whatever you exhale is considered the second hand smoke. And third hand smoke is the smoke and the particles that are left behind on surfaces, such as your couch or your clothing. That's what third hand smoke is. And fortunately and, fortunate, and unfortunately, we have decades of research that's been done around this with combustible cigarettes. There has been research done around vaping also. And yes, there is secondhand and thirdhand um, uh, vaping, I guess you could call it, um, because the particles when you excel, um, exhale are left behind on your clothing, in your carpet, so yeah, it is dangerous if you have maybe like a little brother or sister or a dog that's down on the floor. If you've been around babies, you know they put everything in their mouth. So if they're using or, or have products that have this film that's left on all of the furniture or anything where you're smoking, you can then get it in your mouth or, or other things. And it, and it does leave a film. I don't know if anybody's ever been into a house with somebody that smokes like regular cigarettes. Um, my grandmother used to, and once we moved like the picture on her wall and like you could see the difference between the paint of behind the picture and, and her wall because of all the secondhand smoke and thirdhand smoke that was the residue was left on the wall. So um, yes. There, there are dangers to second and third hand smoke. How do you make people quit? <laughs> All right, I can actually um, speak to that question as an intervention specialist. <laughs> I know I finally get to answer one. Um, so <laughs> part of my job is I work with uh, students who want to quit and those um, who uh, I work with and talking about um, ways that they can quit. So that's actually a great question, especially right now with the COVID-19 and being sheltered in place. Uh, as Nicole was saying, those who vape and um, use tobacco products, they're more susceptible to health-related issues. So now's the perfect time to talk about ways that they can quit and some strategies to do that. I'm going to talk about five strategies um, on how to stay tobacco-free. So I'm gonna talk about those right now. One of those strategies is to participate in an activity or a hobby online games, exercising, music, reading, television, anything to redirect your focus to something else. So when you're not thinking about, when you think about vaping or smoking, you can say, I'm going to go try to play basketball and see if I can like, you know, change my mind and think about it and not think about it anymore. So you're redirecting your focus to something else. Stay inside. Don't go outside. You can go in your backyard though, right? Like, so it's not like you're sheltered in place, but you're not like, and you're, you can still go outside, right? You can go for a walk around, you know, the, the, your neighborhood, right? And just try to keep that distance from other people. So you can still do these things, even though we're sheltered in place. Um, another, another way, number two, is to learn about the tools available to stay tobacco free. There's a lot of tools that we have out there um, online and are free and accessible. Uh, one, a couple that I want to mention are teens.smokefree.gov. 
And that's a tool to help you stay tobacco free. They have tools and tips, nobuts.org, and they offer online support and services. There's also some texting um, services that they have now. If you text the word quit to 47848, you'll receive uh, smoke free text messages to help keep you motivated. And, and sometimes you can receive them daily, you can receive them weekly, it just depends. And um, if you text the word go to 47848, um, it, they send you daily challenges to help build your quitting skills. So see, these are two, and then we have text ditch jewel to 88709, and they will also send you a uh, text message just um, to help build skills and confidence to quit. And they also have a parent resource where if you go to becomeanx.org, parents can go on there and they can um, receive resources to figure out how to work with their children on um, quitting um, tobacco use as well. So like I mentioned, all of these tools are available for free, are easily accessible online. Um, a third strategy is to set and focus on your goals right? And share those goals with somebody else, right? So if you share those goals with somebody else that you trust, obviously, um, they can help hold you accountable. Having something to look forward to can really help keep you focused on that goal. And um, a fourth one is to stay connected with others. Reach out to somebody. Reach out to somebody that you trust and that you know cares about you for that support when you need it. When you're thinking about using, reach out to somebody. You're not alone in this. And um, the fifth one, and I think is like one of the most important, is to focus on you. This is about you. This is for you. You're the only one that can make that choice to be tobacco free. So do things that make you feel good about yourself and to help keep you tobacco free. So I recently created a short video clip, like three minutes, that outlines these uh, five strategies to staying tobacco free, especially while sheltered in place. And I can share that link with you as well. And you can share that and people can check it out and see if it's helpful for them. But these are just kind of like five ways that can like really keep you focused on staying tobacco free, especially right now during these times. Do you have anything to add or did she just knock it out the park? Um, she always knocks it right out the park. She got it all. Um, the only thing that I would add is that um, the tobacco industry does a really good job, unfortunately, at marking their products and making their products extremely addictive. So I think when you're you're talking to someone that has smoked or vaping, um, whether it be you or yourself, it's just be non-judgmental and supportive. Um, people want to quit tomorrow, which is great. That's what we want. Um, but small steps are also to be congratulated and supported. So reducing use um, and or quitting we always want to support in a non-judgmental way and telling people the, um, that you love that you want them to be here longer um, is always an effective way to to help somebody see that this could be um, harmful to their health. Is, is this the time where I ask a uh, quirky question or questioning question? Okay. Yes, please. Quirky question time. At <laughs> uh, what degrees does water freeze? Okay, at what degree does water freeze? If I remember correctly, it's 32 degrees. And I used to go to culinary school and I used to be a chef, so if I got this wrong, um, I know my former professors are gonna be like super upset with me, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure degrees. it's 32 degrees. <laughs> As Sean did, I wanna thank both of you for coming. You guys really helped us, gave us a lot of information. And to all of our 90 viewers i hope you guys are staying inside doing what you're supposed to do and that's about it that's it thank you thank you guys so much for having us i really oh. appreciate it i think what you guys do is amazing <laughs> <laughs> that's it <laughs>